Um, all right, hi everybody. Um, thanks for joining me today, or if you're watching this on YouTube, hi everybody, how's it going? Hope you're well. This is gonna be a very different video to the usual uh, video blogs that you've been watching over the last couple of weeks. Today is gonna to be more of a musical-based one where we talk about uh, the process of writing a nine second cue for a logo reveal for a film company. And we're gonna talk about the process, what I felt was important, sort of go into a bit of detail about how I did it, um, instruments I used, all that kind of stuff. Basically, if you're not interested in that at all, uh, then you can just stop watching if you want. Or if you're vaguely interested in what I actually do outside of living my life on camera and walking around talking shit all the time, then you can stick around and you can maybe uh, learn a little bit more about me <clears throat> and what I do and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, right, so let's dive into this then. Uh, let me get my screen here. We're gonna go screen with um, my camera. Okay, so right now it's a black screen. Um, so behind there, I've got the track in Logic that I've composed. Uh, but I thought it might be a nice way to start would be to actually just show you the the video that I got sent <clears throat> um, as it was, which then I had to come up with the music for. So let's hit play on that. There's no sound because there was no sound in it. My job is to write the sound for it, right? So I'll hit play on that so you can have a look at what I got sent through. Here we go. All right, so like, yeah, it's like nine seconds long. There's nothing to it at all. Uh, so if I shrink that down to a more respectable size so that we can kind of still see it, uh, but also we can see what I've got going on here. So maybe the um, best thing to do to start with is to show you it with music, and then we'll talk about the process, how I got started, all that kind of thing. So let's unmute everything. Um, I'll make it a bit bigger to be nice to see it in some kind of context. And if I play this from the start, I'm going to mute my mic so you don't get any weird hum in the background. Uh, we'll have a little listen to it done, basically. All right, ready? So I'm gonna run it one more time. Nine seconds is quite hard to digest um, what, what just happened. All right, from the top. Okay, so that was that. So, um, we don't need this anywhere near as big anymore. So I suppose the first thing, um, before you start doing anything with, um, like actually writing anything, the first thing you start doing is to actually think about what you want to try and achieve with one of these kinds of videos. Um, so first off, it's a logo reveal that you're going to see at the start of a film. Um, so you want it to be striking. It needs to develop quickly. Uh, it needs to be memorable, but not too memorable because you don't want it to be um, more memorable than the music you're about to hear in the film. Uh, but it also needs to be um, recognizable that when you hear the, that logo that you know kind of what you're watching, even if you've had your eyes closed kind of thing. So it has to have a thematic concept but it has to be introduced and developed way faster than would ever normally be required. So that's an interesting challenge in itself. So that was the sort of thought process behind before I started coming up with anything musical at all. So it was trying to think about what I wanted to achieve with the music, um, the idea of having a theme that, can that you can introduce and then develop in a very short period of time. Um, and you'll see it having listened to it that it, I do that by 
introducing it very early on <coughs> and then going into a epic or a grand version of that theme straight away and then it wraps up um so the actual theme part of the um the stinger or logo reveal is almost entirely done in the brass section um and then the strings and some synths and things like that are doing more of a giving it more of a rhythm uh so the brass which is all down here uh, if you were to hear that on its own it sounds just like this <laughs> Okay, so that's that's what it was. And to get to that point, uh, usually speaking, I approach things in a few different ways. Um, I sort of knew going in these these kinds of logo reveals and this kind of music benefits from having brass as its sort of main thematic melody, which is kind of typical of you know most heroic sounding or big sounding thematic music is usually got a big brass line so I wanted it to focus around that so typically speaking when it comes to writing music um, where I want it to sound like something or I want it to be brass focused the first thing I'd usually do is to actually start writing with the instrument that I would be wanting to use uh, so I might go straight into a horn patch and start playing around with that um, so you can actually see that here um, so I've got my keyboard um, and then you start playing around with um, the simple question of what are the notes going to actually be and how are we going to how are we going to make them work together and all that kind of stuff so the brass thing actually wasn't working for me um, I just couldn't come up with what I was looking for using brass um, so I ended up actually going for a piano in the end um, I find that piano gives you, um, it's easier to write with less of what's going to be in mind in the bigger picture. Uh, and then once you've kind of got your basis of an idea on the piano, you can quite easily move that over into, you know, the instruments of choice, which is quite a common thing, I think. Um, so we open up piano patch, you can see it here. You know, it, it's literally just like noodling around for, you know, unnecessary amounts of time until you come up with an idea that seems like it might be worth doing uh, so in this case it's really focused around uh sort of three notes initially so you've got that's how it starts uh, and then it, the theme goes on from there to to there so that's sort of the the entirety of what's actually happening from a like a lead line um, so what I wanted to do is to add in um, the chords that would go behind that. What we ended up coming, I say we, what I ended up coming up with uh, is this progression where uh, we're starting here. So that's essentially what the chord progression is doing um, or the bass or however you want to word it. So we've got... So that's there is the the entirety of the actual thematic element of the music broken down um, into the horn sections here. Uh, so if we have a look at the trumpet, six horn, two horn, trombone. Actually, just forget the trombones for now. We'll look at these uh, six horns and two horns. Uh, so we'll solo these. So you'll see that they they're basically all doing very similar things. Uh, so we've got, they're all playing, these six horn and two horn are playing the same octave, but they have a slightly different tone. Uh, so I had them playing together. You can see if we look at the MIDI here, all we've already done on the second version or well, the second repetition is to add the octave higher and to have it end on a harmonized note instead of the original landing note. 
basically. Uh, so these guys, they're all playing the main riff. <laughs> And then we have the trombones to come in and they start doing the same thing. And you can see that we've, they've, they're still doing the main melody line, but they're remaining in the same octave as the six horn. Uh, and I've also introduced them doing the, um, the chord progression down. which then gets bigger and thicker if we start to add in the low brass section. So the low brass, um, in terms of like the long notes, have a look here. I don't need this actually automation right now, so we can get rid of that. So the low brass. <laughs> So you can see they're doing the the main melody, but it's harmonized. So that intro line is just sustaining on the original root note, um, whilst the brass moves over it, and then it sort of swells into the chord progression moving down to sort of give the the feeling of grandeur and th that harmony to me has a particular feeling of um, like heroicness to it, um, which I quite enjoy. Um, and then we've got sort of the more, from the brass point of view, we've got a couple of stabs happening down here, but they're not, uh, I'll talk more about them when I get into percussion because they're more sort of directly associated with the percussion. So right, um, so we talk about what else is happening because the, as I sort of mentioned, the, the brass is doing the weight of the thematic um, sort of movements. And then we have uh, our string sections, which is mostly spiccato, uh, which is a very short um, articulation or very short note, uh, which you'd be able to hear here. <laughs> All right, so let's have a look at what's going on then. So this is all the all the strings. So we've got, so you can see that um, the lighter shades here are essentially uh, quieter notes or gent more gently played notes. So we've got from here being the softest to up here being more aggressive. Um, and you can also see that as we get towards the end, uh, it not only does it get more aggressive, but we add in a higher octave for the last phrase. So have a look. Now this is actually a bit tough with um, samples. Like I don't think that they're supposed to, well they're not really meant to play that fast. Um, so if we look at the, the lower parts, um, like the low stacks for example, they're doing they're sort of helping out the brass in, a, in, in many ways, sort of following the melody uh, of the chord progression. So if I played it with these, you'll see that it follows it quite closely. Cool. Um, and then mind myself what's in so this is basically i've got a few different sample libraries playing the same kind of thing at the same kind of time so this one so they're panned left i've got these guys panned right playing the lower octave And then these guys are banging down the middle. Same octave, but a different feel. And then these guys, they're doing uh, two octaves at the same time. So we've got the low octave and the sort of mid octave. 
And then you'll notice this higher one I've just added in here. That won't do much, you won't notice that till the end. And then with the lows. Okay. Um, and then we've, we do have this little woodwind patch, um, which is essentially doing the same as the brass. Now I do like this patch, and I use this patch quite a bit with um, brass because it's, you can kind of hear that it's got like, i bring it down. It's really like, um, it's got quite an aggressive sounding bite to it. So I use that quite a bit actually. Um, and then we have the more uh, sort of percussive areas here. So if we move down to um, timpani, subs, cymbals, we'll have a listen to how those sound on their own. So it's pretty straightforward. And I think timpani was the natural choice for me with this as well, because um i wanted it to, i wanted it to feel like a little bit nostalgic um i wanted it to feel like uh like golden age cinema films of old and i think that the the very modern very big sounding percussion um this wasn't going to work it would it would feel it wouldn't feel like as iconic i suppose not that i'm claiming that anything that i've written is by any means iconic but i think you catch my drift right um so there's the percussion, and then when I mentioned these brass dabs earlier, you can see how they'll work with the um, the initial sort of intro to the theme. Did you get that? I'll play them on their, I'll play them on their own, but they won't, they'll sound a bit weird probably. So we just got big chunky. Okay. So they're doing that and they're just saying like, hello, we're here and we're ready to party, basically. Um, and then underneath the strings, I've got a synth line, um, which is like from Retro Machines. Uh, so that on its own is doing a very, it's basically doing exactly the same thing as the strings. Uh, but I guess it kind of gives it like that kind of more of a modern sounding edge to things um which is quite cool so we'll have a listen simple enough um uh, so it might be interesting to hear what they sound like with the strings actually And then the other thing that I'm missing here is the other uh, bass element, which is the under bass. Now, if you're listening to this on um, like your phone or a laptop, this might just sound like either a nothing or horrendous. So let's see what it sounds like. Yeah, so I don't know what you just heard, but I could hear it, so it's all good with me. And and it's not supposed to be something that's um very well heard. It's, it's a strange thing. It works really well when you play it the octave underneath everything else. So when you blend it in with um like low brass, for example, you see there's those few stabs there. So I've actually got it mimicking what's happening on the bra with the brass stabs as well. Uh, so I'll put them in with it too. And 
and I guess the the, the idea behind that is as simple as um, if you're in a cinema, a good cinema, um, which you know you like to hope that someday this might end up, uh, that the they are more than likely going to have a really good sounding sub, um, and it would be nice if I can to utilize that sub as best I can to really make that sound full and to make it really fill your speakers so that it sounds satisfying to listen to. You know, we're trying to capture that. I think his brief was one of the Marvel logo reveals. Um, so if we got anywhere near to that, then I'm quite happy with that. Um, so that is essentially what everything is actually doing. I don't know if that's been enlightening in any way whatsoever but i just thought i'd show you sort of how a how a queue ends up being constructed um you know it's not you know, take away the piano which wasn't actually being used for anything other than just coming up with the idea there's 21 tracks of audio of, of midi you know there's not there's not a mountain of stuff going on and that's purely because um i loaded up what i thought i needed um, and got rid of anything else that I didn't. So you can write big sound in music and you don't need to necessarily have a hundred tracks to achieve it. I'm sure that I could add several more, you know, to really layer this out and add more and add more and add more and, and do a nice mix of it. But I, I don't know, do you need to? I don't feel like you do. I think for me, this is, um, it sounds great. So, you know, and at the end of the day, what it comes down to is it whether your client's happy and the client is happy. So I'm happy to. I think it's a very cool nine seconds of music that sorts of, it gets you hyped, it gets you excited for um, whatever it is you're about to see. It's catchy and thematic, but not going to be a distraction to the film's score uh, in any way. Uh, so I'm going to give it one more blast. Ready? All right, well, that was it. It's only going to be a short one. At the end of the day, it's a nine second cue, isn't it? It's not a, a 10 minute epic, so I can't talk forever about it. Uh, but I just thought I'd give you a little bit of a look at the process. If you're interested in what was being used, uh, let me just flick through some of these quickly. I'll, um, I'll hit that so when I'm flicking through, you can see as things change. So I've got um, on the very highest spiccato string patch, I have uh, Spitfire Audio Albion 1. And then if we move down one, it's Spitfire Audio Albion 1 again. And then we've got some low, um, the Spitfire Audio Albion 3 Iceni. And this is the cello patch, the low cello patch they have in there. Uh, the short articulations, which I think sound really cool. You can see that I've got it on just close mics. I was really looking to get the bite off of it. And the fact that the um, the pattern it's playing is quite fast. Having any other mic positions in there, everything started getting very muddy very quickly. So just kept it with close mics. Uh, so moving down the layer. This is Cine Symphony Light by Cine Samples. This is their string ensemble sort of patch. So you've got the whole spread of the keyboard here. Um, let me just go down to the wide. So we go. And then right, so moving down from there, uh, this is going to be another patch of um, Albion 1. This one's panned to the left, while this one's panned to the right. And then the low will be Iceni again, and this is on the strings low patch. Which is a great sounding patch. Yeah, that's one of my favorites actually. Um, low winds, um, again, Spitfire Audio, Albion 3 Iceni, Woodwinds Low. Uh, then we've got um, Trumpets, 
all the brass, I'm pretty sure, apart from the low brass, is going to be Cinebrass by Cine Samples. I've got Cinebrass Core. Um, they're really good sounding. And then uh, the low brasses are both going to be, you can see here. Oh, no, okay. So the first one is going to be uh, Iceni by Spitfire Audio again. They're low longs. I love. <laughs> Basically, as it goes, it can go, which is insane. Yeah, they're great. And then the other low one I've got here is the. Um, Cinebrass core again, it's a sim basso and a bass trombone. Very aggressive sounding, uh, which is why they work quite well together. I think the Iceni is by nature a little bit softer, but still sounds very full. So that versus this. together I think you know what I mean it catches that really nicely uh, and then we've got the low shorts of the art from Iceni and then the six horn shorts from um, Cinebrass um, symbols are all from um, Cine Symphony Light as well so you know big shout out to Spitfire Audio and also to Cine Samples for they're essentially the only two libraries that I really use every day. Um, and then Symbols 2 will be the same. Um, I've separated them out. So uh, Symbols are actually their percussion patch and they've got a lot of different instruments or sounds within that. Um, like going all the way up from bells to percussion, snares. Yeah, you're getting a picture. But they do have really nice sort of... Um, orchestral symbols at the top end of here uh, and they've got a really nice uh, sort of swelling symbol patch which sounds like this that's bullshit that's a gong sorry so basically that patch symbols two i've used primarily for um like impact symbols like hits and gongs and crashes, things like that. Whereas Symbols 1 will be more of the swell, which will be heard now. So I use those a lot to build into a crescendo. Um, and then Timpani is again, um, Cine Symphony Light. Sub hit, um, that's some of the Darwin percussion from Albion 1. There's a lot more in there than just those. We've got lots of other hits. So really there's everything you could really need there. Uh, and then we've talked about the synth thrift being from Retro Machines. Well, look, that's it for today. Um, if you enjoyed our break from our usual format of programming and you have any interest in this at all and would like to see more of this kind of stuff, then let me know and I'll be happy to do some more. Uh, I might also do some really like quite long videos where we do maybe um, working from a blank canvas and coming up with an idea and writing it from scratch, that kind of thing. Uh, so that could be cool in future. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching. Drop me a like and um, subscribe and comment and get involved, all that kind of shit. And I will see you in the next one. Uh, but for now, let's play ourselves out with one last look without me on camera and that will be the end of the video all right thank you for watching everybody and i will see you next time have a good one